We're now going to look at different ear equalizing techniques. There is simple yawning and swallowing, which is how we equalize from day to day, but is not necessarily practical when diving. Then there's voluntary opening of the Eustachian tube, which some divers, about 10%, learn to do. The Valsalva technique is the simplest to teach, which is pinching and blowing. The Toynbee technique, which is pinching the nose and swallowing. The Frenzel technique, which is pushing the tongue at the back of the throat to actually force air into the Eustachian tube. And twitching. Let's look at these in turn. This is what happens when you swallow. The soft palate pulls upwards and in the process it actually opens the Eustachian tubes. You may want to try that now. Just pinch your nose and swallow and you may notice a change in your ears. We'll explore this again when we look at the Toynbee technique in a moment. Voluntary equalizing by opening the Eustachian tubes is something that some divers discover. It's a bit like the way you would yawn in polite company. In other words, it's sort of a strangled yawn, if you'd call it that, and you notice that there's a clicking in the Eustachian tubes as the muscles orientate themselves and literally open the tube. If you can get to do this, great, but many divers don't, so don't worry. This is the technique that your diving instructor has probably taught you or will be teaching you. Notice how the video clip shows the eardrum bulging in response to the person equalizing. This particular technique can sometimes be done too forcefully or for a too long period of time. So you don't want to do it for more than about five seconds. The reason being that you can either force the ears, which can cause damage, or you may even pass out. So don't overdo a good thing. The next technique is the one that you may have tried earlier, which is pinching your nose and swallowing. What you may notice after you did the previous technique of pinching and blowing is that when you swallow, it actually feels as if the ears close up. That's because this technique initially opens the Eustachian tube and then milks it empty, actually showing that your Eustachian tube works in both directions, allowing air in and allowing air out. The next technique is one that's worth mastering if you can. Basically what happens, as illustrated here, is you deliberately push your tongue against the soft part of the palate and in the process reduce the volume of the nasopharynx, so that's the volume behind the nose, so that it pressurizes and literally injects air into the Eustachian tube openings. It's a bit like saying hmm or k in the back of the throat. Something you could even try to show that you're getting this technique right is filling your mouth with water and believe it or not you will find that you can actually equalize by pinching the nose and using the Frenzel technique with a mouthful of water without drowning and without needing to blow from your chest. Try it. It's worth discovering. Many people who struggle to Valsalva do very well with the Frenzel technique. Experiment and try it out. It's something you will do most when you dive. The next technique is really just a fun way to discover your ears and basically you pinch the nose, blow gently, not to the point of equalizing, but then just before they would pop you turn the head to the side. What that does is it, it stretches the Eustachian tube and literally allows gas to escape into it. Now, if equalizing doesn't work the way it should, there are some tricks you can try. I've used the mnemonic help me to make it easier to remember. Head tilting, Edmonds. Lowry, politarization or oat events, medical assessment and ENT visits. So let's have a look. Head tilting is useful when you find, as at least half of divers do, that the one ear is easier to equalize than the other. So here's what happens. When you stretch the neck, it actually pulls down on the oropharyngeal structures, that's the space behind the tongue, and it makes it easier to equalize the ear that is, if you like, pointing upwards. Now this has got nothing to do with daylight or buoyancy. It's literally just the effect of stretching the Eustachian tube. So why not try it? Tilt your head, remember to stretch the muscles in the neck and let the ear that is a little bit slower than the other, if you have that, point upwards. Then using any technique you like, try to equalize. You should find the ear pointing upward now equalizes first or at least faster than it used to. The next technique is very, very powerful and it involves jutting your jaw forward, something you can do even with a regulator in the mouth. What that does is it tenses the jaw muscles involved with opening the jaw and in the process opens part of the Eustachian tube. It makes equalizing easier. Try it.
it really is worth doing. And then if you'd really like to just feel your steak and tubes open, try Christopher Lowry's technique. It involves pinching your nose, blowing gently and swallowing at the same time. You may need to take a glass of water to make it easier. Now for divers that struggle to equalize, rather than consider medication long term, this is a device that is available and is basically a balloon and a nozzle. Many divers find ways to improvise this technique, but essentially what is involved is inflating the balloon through the nose and in the process both equalizing the middle ear because the amount of pressure involved in inflating the balloon will open the eustachian tube, but also as the balloon deflates, swallowing intermittently so that it exercises the eustachian tube. In my experience, I've found that divers that use this device, maybe twice to three times a day for a week, find that their ears are easy to equalize and they no longer need the medication that they may have used in the past, like Sudafed or Sudafedrine.